President Cyril Ramaphosa will deliver his sixth State of the Nation address at Cape Town City Hall this evening. The speech, which is taking place outside of Parliament for the first time, comes amid an unemployment rate of 34.9%, rolling power cuts and a stagnant economy. It is also on the back of security concerns, rampant corruption and fraud. Newsroom Africa anchor Colin Gumby is live to us this morning at the Grand Parade in Cape Town. Colin, when we build up to the State of the Nation address every year, we talk about the importance of this SONA. This year it does feel uh, very different. It's sort of the first post-COVID -sonia, post SONA we're having um, in the last couple of years. It's on the back of the State Capture Inquiry report uh, coming to an end. The final report is expected at the end of February, in fact. There does feel to be a lot hanging on this State of the Nation address. You're absolutely correct, Michelle, and that is that South Africans, I think they have had to deal with quite a lot uh, in the last two years specifically, in particular starting off with uh, 2020 where uh, the country was gripped by the COVID-19 pandemic. And then on the back of that, you have the arrest of the former president, Jacob Zuma, following his contempt of court charge and that had to do with issues emanating from the state capture commission of inquiry as you've summed it up two final reports have now been handed to the president and then the last element was the july unrest and the warnings that were issued to say the national security council which is chaired by the president should perhaps meet more regularly because of these warnings that had been uh, put through. But it would appear that the president and his cabinet failed, which is what that report said. Uh, but, Michelle, I, I want to hone in on this last element about the July unrest report because I have with me um, Kulego Shlengwa, who chairs the Standing Committee on Public Accounts. I'll probably take uh, my chances and also talk to him as spokesperson of the IFP to find out what their expectations are. But let's kick off the conversation, Mr. Shlengwa, with um, the report of the July unrest. And in that report, the panel of experts are very clear that divisions in the ANC are causing instability for the country. When you hear such words on the back of what, at least at the start of January, you started speaking about, which was to say, Mr. President, come to my committee and clarify your statements around public monies possibly being used for ANC elective conferences. Link those two for me. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I don't think there is a link, but what is clear from the report of the panel of experts is that there's an absence of leadership in the country and the country is literally on autopilot because the executive is on a laissez-faire attitude approach towards governance. Um, it's all about theatrics and not about the substantive issues of the daily lived um, conditions of our people. They seemingly taking t assume there's a goodwill in a sea of problems. Um, idle hands are the devil's playground. And so the lack of seriousness on the part of the executive to hold the bull by the horns, to deal with the issues confronting the country. Um, and of course the intelligence services of South Africa have been compromised for the longest of time uh, and when they have to be actually functional, they're not there. Yeah. Schools burnt in Vuani day in and day out and seemingly nobody knew what was happening. All those things have been indicators of a security agency which is compromised and not fulfilling its fiduciary responsibilities. On the issue of the president um, and the recording, we have sent him a set of questions uh, which he must respond to. His deadline is today. The committee. The deadline is today. Yes. Wow. Um, the committee reserves its right to invite the president to appear before it if we are not satisfied or we feel that the responses need further interrogation. I want to fundamentally stress. The committee is pursuing due process <clears throat> and we will not allow a situation to be drawn in into the factional problems which you speak about. What we are interested in is the president makes an assertion that 
public funds were used for party political activities. That is our interest because we need the information that the president has in order for us to strengthen the work of the AG but also to strengthen the work of oversight and accountability to ensure that that kind of criminal action um, does not uh, continue. So due process is, is really what we, we are pursuing and when we receive those responses we will actually consider them accordingly. All right. Very briefly for me, expectations as a spokesperson of the IFP. We literally have less than a minute. Well, <clears throat> the president must not make the mistake of coming here tonight and deliver the state of the ANC address. He must deliver the state of the nation. He needs to account for his past promises and commitments in last year's SONA. <clears throat> and the only way to account is to say none of the things were achieved. But the focus areas really has to be the economy and jobs for the majority of our people, infrastructure development, and to ensure the functionality and effectiveness of SOEs, where he himself too has been found wanting. So re this is a watershed moment for the president to redeem himself on the national interest. Thank you very much, IFP spokesperson, doubling up as the chairperson of the Standing Committee on Public Accounts. Michelle, I've got to tell you very quickly as I hand back to you that uh, at around quarter past eight, I would think, uh, I have it on firm authority now that the president will inspect uh, the venue where he is going to deliver the State of the Nation address this evening. So we might just interrupt your program when you least expect it. All right, we're going to take your word for it. We'll take you there live when the president does conduct that oversight visit. Uh, Colin Gumby, thanks very much indeed. He's live to us there from the Grand Parade in Cape Town.